Hey, 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 welcome everybody. So excited that you have joined us here today for Wealthy Church. Happy Easter. Hello, hello, hello. Wow. I'm with my friend here, Matt Carpenter. Good to have you here. Good to got be here. a surprise guest with, with me. He's got a prophetic word for you. You're not going to want to miss this. I know. I know, you know, I'm not a traditional guy. I, I did wear my happy Easter shirt. Okay. But you know, I'm not a traditional guy. I mean, we're called wealthy church. I mean, <laughs> so like, we're not going to do the traditional, uh, Hey, Jesus, Jesus died and rose again. He's risen from the grave. And yes, I I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. He yep. did. It really separates the fact that you know Muhammad's dead, Buddha's dead, uh, and and every other the crystals are dead, but Jesus is alive, man. And because Jesus is alive, you know he has the power to transform and change our lives. Dead things can't change anything. That, that's one reason why you need to make sure you have good health. A dead person can't change the world. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? You gotta, you gotta be alive to change the world. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So all these other gods that people serve, none of them say, wait, this God died and rose again. That's what separates Christianity from every other religion in the world. And listen, if you're listening, I want to tell you, Jesus can radically, I'm talking about radically, I honestly believe there's no such thing as a born again bank robber. <laughs> I believe when Jesus comes into your heart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and into your life, because he is alive, when he comes in, change is going to happen. There's going to be some sort of remarkable change. I'm not talking about you just going to your little, go to little church and, you know, you sing out a hymnal and you rub your rosary bead. And I'm not talking about, you know, you just, sing some songs and hear a sermon and go, amen. I'm talking about, I'm talking about when Jesus, I, I, I just believe this, that when Jesus comes in, something's going to change in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if your life doesn't change, I don't know if you really have, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know if you really, really have Jesus. I don't know if you really have experienced an encounter with God or not, but 31 years ago, 31 years ago, I, I said, yes, I surrendered my life to Jesus. And when he come, when he came in, devils went out of me. That's all I can tell you. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I was into everything. I mean, I, I was smoking marijuana, marijuana, like it was like Cheech and Chong. I mean, I was, I was, I, I was drinking. I was alcoholic. I was a womanizer, but man, Cussed like a sailor, but when Jesus came into my life, everything was changed. Mm -hmm. And it's been 31 years, man. Wow. 31 awesome. years, and these lips have never touched a drop of alcohol. Nope. Nope. Never smoked another cigarette. I was smoking, you know, pack and a half of cigarettes a day, plus some Kodiak. You, you're, you're up from, you're, mass up from Maine. So, you know, they, they have Kodiak up there, a little pinch between the cheek and gums, you know, oh. chewing tobacco. Oh, yes. Yeah, chewing, yeah. I never did that stuff. Chewing tobacco. Yeah. I, I had a smoke pack, I half cigarettes a day, plus I added some chewing tobacco in every once in a while. <laughs> you know, and, and so, alcoholic, drug addict, I worked all day to party all night, every day, party, yeah. party, party, party. And um, man, when he came in, my life just, was changed. And so if you're listening to this broadcast, we want you to know Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. But what does that mean to you? Yeah. That means to you that Jesus, God, Emmanuel, wants to come and dwell inside of mortal man. And when he comes in, you become born again. You become transformed. You become changed. And if you're looking for real life change, listen, listen. It's Jesus. All right. It's Jesus. He has the power to change lives. So that's our, that's our Easter message today. 
And we know it, we're going to talk about some things today that's not traditional Easter. He, he, he went to the cross. He rose from the grave. And he is alive. That's our message in five minutes <laughs> for Easter, okay? But today I want to talk about something that I think is important. And I have Matt here. He pastors a awesome church. I love, I love his church. I love the people of his church. They love you too. They do? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. Praise God. <laughs> I, I, was like, I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know why, but, don't know but, why. but you know, I, I know. But, you know, anyway. Can you see? You can't have, you, you know, these guys, you got to watch who you have on your show, man. You got to be careful, you know. But anyway, he, he pastors a great church up there. He has an a, a apostolic and gift upon his life, him and his wife. Amy are two wonderful people. They're graduates of Destiny College. He has his doctorate degree. It's 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 now yeah. Doctor Matt Carpenter. It is true. And uh, I'm, I'm so two proud years, of you. Two and a half years ago now. Two and a half. Two, two, two and a half years ago. Yeah. Man, it seems two like a, it was yesterday. Oh. Him and his wife went through our whole college. Man, what did you think about our school? God brought us to you for sure, because what you, how the college was and the courses that was on that and the things, it was right where we need to be because it switched us and propelled us from point A to point B. Where it was, it, there's puzzles that come into our life. There's puzzle pieces all the time, and you provided that. And that was a God-ordained moment, meeting you and then you telling us about the school, and then God said, this is it, do it. Okay. And uh, wow. Change how we deliver the message, to change, change who we are. Mm-hmm. And everything's about that, like you just were talking about. Once, it's, once Jesus is in your life, it changes. Well, so is a message. It changes everything. And it changes, in order to change your results or change what's happening outside, you have to be changed here first. And things just started clicking and moving. And so we're thankful for God using you and your wife and your ministry. So thank, thank you. you. You know, I was thinking Thank this you. morning, someone, uh, someone asked me, say, what do you do? I said, I'm a learner. I'm a learner. Always. That's what I do. Wow. And all you're getting, get what? Wisdom. I'm a learner. Mm, I'm a professional learner. I like to learn. That's why I like books. Books. Yeah, books. books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what's called a book. <laughs> And the way you learn is you read the book. <laughs> I know that sounds foreign to some of you. Yes, you've got to read. All yeah. right. And uh, and so anyway, let's let's we're we're, we're, we're having fun. But yeah, I like it. I like it. But anyway, he wrote a book called Contender. The subtitle is Seize It. Or wait a minute, see it, see it. seize it, live it. And uh, I'm so excited about about the message here. And I think if there's ever a time, I mean, to me, that 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 message says, you know, I, I was talking all week about there's a fight going on. Fight for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it. We're not in a fight for our salvation. That's done, sealed, delivered. I don't have to yep. do. I don't have to fight for that. That's all by grace. Yep. But here on earth. To get to the promised land, mm-hmm. there's there's something we got to fight for, and uh, I want you to talk about this book and let's have a discussion about it. And tell me first of all the word contender. What right. what does that tell us? How this right. message formed in you and sure. share with our, our group. You know, and I have had people ask me and talk to me, uh, Doctor Keith, and they said, "Well, why didn't we call it champion? Because you know we're more than or conqueror. We're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus." And and I wanted to take it back to the mud, back to the nitty gritty, the decisions that we had to make, have to make every day, in order to succeed or fail, it comes out of our decisions. And if you did fail, hey. He's faithful. He'll pick us back up. Get up seven times, the Bible says, and get back up. So contender, it doesn't happen automatically. I run into a lot of people with conversations. They think, well, I'm a Christian, and everything's going to happen magically now. And yeah, I know I'm suffering for Jesus and everything, but, you know, his promise came to me. It's going to happen. And uh, just dealing with people like that all the time, you come to that place where it's like, no, there's a missing piece here. God Mm. is not this genie in a bottle. And so I, I had to begin to 
talk about that because sometimes we receive prophetic words from the Lord or the scripture speaks to us. Something drops in our spirit and we hang on to that. And that's where hope is. And you need hope. But, mm. but, there's always that but. Mm -hmm. In order for that to come out, there, like I said, you're going to run into resistance anytime. And, and really, the resurrection is about authority. He restored authority. Everything's about authority. And if you don't know your authority in God, then how can you take ground or territory? How can you move into the promises and the things God has for your life? Because mm -hmm. where you're not ruling, something else is ruling there. And it's not the Lord. And it has to be disposed, just like the children of Israel going into that promised land. They had to get rid of a king who's there illegally or whatever it is. Hey, God gave us this. You're out of here. <laughs> there are like things that. here that are yeah. illegal mm -hmm. that we've listened and believed to, whether we were raised that way or whether we experience or trauma put those things in us and God wants to deliver us. So there's a contending that had to take place, has to take place. We all have maybe received prophetic words from a prophet or from somebody that came from the Lord and we knew, oh, that's me. Yeah. But... What is year it? after year after year goes by and nobody Nothing is happened. attaining. Nothing's happening. You're not pushing into it. And so I base this and I use a story um, at, at the end of every chapter is the love story between Jacob and Rachel. And how he mm. had to, um, it, you know, he had to work. He got deceived and he had wow. to work extra for her because he ended up with Leah. Yeah. And so I kind of got this little love story going on on the end of the chapter, just to kind of, mm -hmm. and, and I took based on scripture, but then kind of added to it just because even then they're human, we're human. What would, if I was living there, what would be happening? If I was him, what would be happening? And I kind of wove it that way to make it real for the reader to, to understand and say, mm, yeah, I like that. So like what, okay, I, I'm, I'm sort I'm seeing the picture of, of this so so you're talking about you get a promise from god yep god gives you a promise you see a uh through revelation god shows you maybe a picture of your future mm -hmm. and and so what you're saying if i'm hearing you right like okay it's one thing to get a picture to see it but then it's another thing to realize i'm assuming that the word contender i i didn't look up the word contender right. But I'm 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 associating it with there's a fight now. Is that there's is that fight. what there's does what I, does contender mean? I mean a champion to me means you already won the battle. Correct. <laughs> and we have in Christ. Right? Right, right, right. But what's contender mean? Like what's that? What is what? How do you define in the, that? In the contender, the to contend, the verb and it's an action means to struggle to surmount it. It means a, a difficulty or a danger or a resistance. You got to break it. So contend it. It just doesn't happen. So the contender, the, that action, it's to engage in a competition or a campaign in order to win or achieve something. Wow. A campaign. So in Paul order even win. said, we have a race that we're running, you know, and. Right. And we use all this Christianese language in our everyday life, but we don't even know what that looks like. And it's like, yeah, what kind of race are you running? You know, where are you running to? Most often people are running away from something because they don't understand what's surrounding them. Mm. Wow. They, they don't know what's right there in their hands, ready to go. And I like what you said. You know what? He puts it in here. He puts a picture, his picture in, and it's screaming in us, but we have to start painting it. Mm -hmm. Those that are artistic out there, you know what I'm saying. You see that first in your life. You see that, and then you have, but if you don't pick up a brush, you're never gonna paint it. You're never gonna bring it from the invisible to the visible. Mm -hmm. And I, and I know that that's what your message is with Wealthy Church and, and other things that you're doing. It's bringing those things that are hopes and dreams and wis, you know, yeah. wispy things into a reality. Mm -hmm. That's what this is talking about. Wow. How to do that and what you're going to face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to face some hard times, but you're also going to face the awesome times too. The praise times, the running times. So you mentioned like you have the love story between yeah. uh, Jacob and, and Leah, right? Rachel. Or Ray, 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 Jacob and Rachel. Okay, yeah. all right. I'm gonna get my story Leah's right. the older one, and yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah that I Uncle forgot Laban, about that. That Uncle Laban is tricky. Yeah, yeah. And you might have an Uncle Laban in your life, and I'm not talking about a person who's, oh, you're about this close to attaining what you what you know should be in your life, and then it's with, you're betrayed. It's just like, what in the Betrayal. World? So on the road to manifesting your dream that's in your heart, mm -hmm. or the promise, there's going to be somebody mm -hmm. that's going to 
Betray you. Betray you. You got to pass the test. Can we say it this way? You got to pass the test of betrayal. Yeah. So I'm we're talking say. about Easter, right? Yes, Jesus had to pass See? the test he of Judas's be betrayal. He had to. And still keep a right spirit. Mm -hmm. Still, still be positive. And we say we want to be like Jesus. Yeah, yeah, but we don't want no betrayal. <laughs> I believe that's one of the most forging things in times in our life is having that betrayal. Mm. Nobody wants that. And sometimes it happens more than once. And but it's I believe it's it's how you come out the other end. Yeah. Because at that point in time, and I've had it happen, I had to walk away from that, and I couldn't let any residue of that come on. I had to contend. Otherwise, the calling of my life, the things that that the purpose and the reason I'm here would have fell by the wayside. If I so you've been that, betrayed. I have, oh yeah. And you face the pain of it. Yeah. And, and you know me, I'm a people person. Yeah. So get that on top of that. Yeah. You know, and I, but I'm not a man pleaser. I had to learn that real early in ministry, but uh, it's just at that point, it, it's like hits you, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm, what am I going to do now though? And well, if you're, we just talked about it a little bit ago, right? If you don't have haters, you're not really doing nothing. No. Yeah. Yeah. You're just cruising <laughs> along with the wind in your hair. And... <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have betrayers. You're gonna have haters. Yeah. What else? What else did Jay? What did he face uh, in contending? Yeah. The betrayal. What was well, another the first one, one was he 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 was sent away by his parents, right? <laughs> so because wow. they didn't want him mixing around with the Canaanite women, so you're going up to Uncle Laban's. So get going. So he had to deal with loneliness. He ended up having a wrestle match with the angel of the Lord. God touched him and he walked different from that day forward. So are you saying that like, he was raised with a dysfunctional family? He had to deal he, with dysfunction yeah, within the household? And, and within himself and the household. He you had know his own agenda. And you know what people don't point out like that I saw many, many years ago? Is that people don't realize that uh, favoritism, the importance of not favor, having favorite. favorites mm -hmm. in your household will mess up your whole household. As a parent, if you do for one, you've got to do the got same to. for the equal Co one. Correct. Yeah. The greatest contentions amongst brothers and sisters comes when you when you say I love this one and you show more and favor more one or the other, you can see that all throughout the Bible where the big mistake was made in parenting. Right. And so he had to deal with that. It was like, I'm not the favored one, right? Because he he kind of went after that uh, blessing, didn't he? Yeah. He, <laughs> he, had some he saw it, he seized it, and he said, hey, I want to live this thing. Whether, yeah. whether we agree with the method or not, right? But he knew he was destined for something. And so he goes, hmm. I'm going to pretend I'm the other brother and, you know, all, all that whole story. And it's like, But wow. he had to deal with being the black sheep, right? And he had to do it the right way. Yeah. Yes. And then you said loneliness. But, mm, wow. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. What else? So loneliness and we got the wrestle match going on uh, with the Lord because God had to put some things right here. He had his own attitudes and he got up there. But what I like is when he gets there, he got this big macho attitude because there she is with the sheep, couldn't get the well cover off by herself, you know, and no one else was helping any of the other shepherds. He gets down there and rips that thing off and her eyes go, ooh, <laughs> the man. Okay. Who are yeah. you? Uh-huh. Right? A little bit of chivalry there, you yeah. know, so he had to step up into his own. Mm. Couldn't hide under his brother. He couldn't hide under his father. He wow. had to begin to step up on his own. He's a, yeah, Uncle Laban, uh, he's going to see him in a few minutes, but, you know. He, he's starting to assert himself there. And of course, ah, in that whole journey, you know, you got the whole thing with God showing him how to put the stakes properly by his by the water hole. And, and his his flock was getting blessed more than Laban. See, already on the road to blessing. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. He was already contending by the way he did things every day. Mm. And again, we have family problems in that. So Laban gets jealous. And so then we have this whole thing, you know, and separating of the family. Right. And then Laban's chasing him, and he <laughs> thinks he's going to get killed. And, or Esau shows up. Or now all this stuff is like, oh, my land. I'm just trying to get away from some of this stuff. 
but he, he is, his, his flocks were so blessed. They were rich. They were pure. They, they, in, in Middle East, you know, the blacks, they were the black goat sheep was worth more. You know, it just kept going. Mm -hmm. And wealth kept increasing. Things started increasing. And he started coming into his own. And who, who knew he would be the head of Israel? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As a father. I mean, that destiny was coming. Wow. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. So there was, it, just because he had that lineage, and sometimes you might have that lineage in, if you're blessed with that. I come from that lineage. Uh, my grandfather, my father. You know, but I can't live on their tail. I had to contend for it. I had to face my own things in life. And, and I am a little bit stubborn. Yeah. That can work for you or against you. And the Lord had to form me in my young years to turn that into a place where, are you going to fight for this? Are you going to fight for it? And not with a fighty spirit. I'm not talking about you, hey, you're very aggressive and you're pushing people around. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this one right here because that's where the contending takes place. Mm. You fight with yourself a lot more than you fight with the devil. Yeah. A lot more than you're going to fight with other people. Mm -hmm. You're going to end up fighting here. You're going to mm -hmm. contend here. And if you don't see the picture of blessing or the picture of what you're to step into here, it never happens. Wow. So there's things that are going to happen in your life. And if you miss those important earmark stages, mm. you kind of put back and you got to learn it over again until you understand and identify. Oh, hold on. I know the room I'm in. Mm -hmm. The unknown, if you don't search it out, it'll drive you out of the room. And you've got to grow up a little bit and come back into the room to face what you have to face. Mm. We're all going to contend one way or another. And you know what? I don't want to contend for my life. I don't want to be under the enemy's foot and trying to survive and, 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 and just, Lord, get me out of here all the time. I don't want to contend in that way. I want to contend and I'm going to get that prize. Mm -hmm. It's a decision, isn't it? And that's, that's where I was coming from. A lot of people carry prophetic words or words or dreams or whatever word you want to use in their life and say, this is for my future, but they always put it into their future. You have to bring it from the future and bring it into your now mm. and hold it in your hands. Because I can't paint your picture for you. I can add it. I can give you a prophetic word and it's a confirmation or an adding or something that the Lord wants to use me to deliver to him. But at the end, Dr. Keith has to form that picture and believe it in I himself gotta see it. and see it and then contend for it. So yes, in Christ, we are more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. But until we grow up into that, I don't, I don't see in scripture where he says you don't have to fight for it. I, I don't see where it says, oh, it'll all just land on your plate and it'll just be because I said. No, you just need to live in grace, brother. Oh, just, it's just going to happen. Just live, live in the grace of God and relax. Love Jesus take, more. Take it easy. Whatever that just means. soak in his presence. Praise the Lord. <laughs> just praise your way through, brother. Just praise your way through. And, and I believe in the power of praise. I believe in the presence. I believe in all that. But if it's not applied properly, it's just a fantasy. It's just a dream, isn't it? And so, I, you know, this starts dealing with some hard knocks that people are going to face. It's not skirting any issue. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. I really appreciate that. Uh, with all that you said, I think in terms of family, mm -hmm. that many times the greatest Resistance things we got to contend with mm -hmm. is family yeah and i i've seen it with so many people's lives that that they're unwilling to there's family members that are hurting them and they're unwilling to disconnect from family members in order to go where they need to go and they can't see that they keep pulling them down it's funny you, you said that because we had that conversation before when you're growing and a lot of things and the Lord is expanding you and putting a lot in your life. Sometimes you sit with family and you try to share that in the moment they either change the subject or they're looking at you like the cow with their hides bulging out and they don't have a clue what you're talking about. You real it's sad at that point when you realize you don't even know who I am. Mm, yeah. Oh, Isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. that's you have to deal with that and still <laughs> love love them where they're at and but what are you gonna do from here that's on? That's funny. Yeah. You know what I'm. You know what I'm saying is. Yeah. Yeah. They start. They they get around you like my wife cracks up. Like they they get around you and they start talking about who you used to be. Correct. Right. They don't know the new you of who you are today. It's very hard. And uh, my wife was, would be like, "What? What? What are they talking about? That that's not who you are." I'm like, 
I know. Hey, we know. <laughs> and I believe that's what Jesus was talking about in that scripture where he says, you have to leave your, you know, son, leave the father. And, oh, that's and, a... or, and leave your mother yes. or whatever. You yes. know, it's not like the kingdom is divisive and destroying families. It's, it means in, what are you going to do in your life? Are you going to, for the sake of your family, leave everything that the Lord has right in front of you, that he's bringing you into and molding you and making you? Are you going to abort that process to please even your natural family in that way? You're going to allow them to, to keep you stuck? I mean, those are some real issues and they're hard issues to deal with. But everyone sooner or later has to make one a decision. You can't ride the fence with that right? because it's relational and it's so intimate in its core. That's what it is. But yeah. you're going to have to make that decision. And I believe when you choose what the Lord has for your life, there is this something with family. But it's, it's, it's not like maybe they're not your greatest cheerleader. Right. And sometimes you have to practice what I call uh, the, the principle of C. What is it? What is it? The E, oh. C, and F principle. That you only hang out with family for Easter, Christmas, <laughs> and funerals. <laughs> you're bad. You're bad. You're bad. <laughs> you're so bad. Uh, what about the barbecues? Yeah, yeah. no barbecues, no barbecues, no no barbecues. Oh. It's just this. Hey, we'll, we'll see you at Easter. We'll see you at Christmas time. Here's your here's your presents, and and uh, we'll we'll see you uh, at a funeral. Hey, Bob, how you doing, Bob? Good to see you. Man. And you know what? And, and you only can talk with people, especially since we're on this family thing. You can only talk with them at the level that they will accept. Mm -hmm. But don't allow yourself to be back formed into that picture they have for you. Mm -hmm. And there might be that little awkwardness there a little bit, but at the same time, you want to keep that bridge open all the time. You know, hey, I'm willing. You want to sit down and talk? I'll, I'll reveal who I am a little bit more for you, but I'm Unless, not going to cast it all up in front of you and then cause more problems and good. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work either. And on the other side, having grace with your family, you know, and they can't see what you see. They can't see what you see, so don't expect them to. Give them some grace. I think you're touching on something pretty prophetic here today. To this not, is good. yeah, to not, you know, just, and you just, you know, walk away, say they just can't see what I see, and God bless their hearts, <laughs> you know, and, and move on, right? And, yeah. Yeah. and with the things they say to you, you know, you, Ooh, you don't take it in. You can't. You, 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 you say, no, that's, that's fine. I, and that's good for you. It's good thoughts for you, the way you think. But, you know, it's ama yeah. isn't it amazing to you how loud ignorance speaks? <laughs> it's like... I've like, never heard it put that way before. It's yeah, good. It's like ignorance always speaks like super loud. Like like they know. Like whenever someone oh. like, like they say like something, it's yeah. totally ignorant. Yeah. And, and they say something that's like... I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> I'm thinking inside, Keith, uh, be nice here. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's not how it is. Uh, but oh, I, I don't even shake my head. It's like, what do you say? You just change the subject. Hey, uh, how's Bob doing? How's Brother Tim doing? How's, how's your dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how's your dog? I want to remember that one. How's your dog? That yeah. always works. Pets, yeah, how's your dog? How's your pet? Yeah, how's your pets seem to be very. How's your pet spider? How's, okay. Uh, all right. So anyway, distractions. Deal with distractions. Um, right. Was he dealt with a lot of that. distractions? Have, we all humans. We all do. I, you know, part of contending. The let's employ the enemy. Distract you with stuff that's good. It's not bad. But boy, yeah. if it gets you bogged down, pulled back, uh, off the trail a little bit, and we stay in that, it's a self deception because we accept that. So distractions are something we have to deal with in contending. In in moving forward, in in stepping into what God is forming in us. So he's forming something in us to explode out of us, but it doesn't happen automatically. There's always this barrier. That's what we're breaking down for it to come out. And I'm sure you use the children of Israel a lot in this, yes. this book, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Going into the promised land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's lessons to be learned. Yeah. I mean, look at all the doubters. Mm -hmm. What happened to that? Doubt will always leave you out. Yeah, never can enter in. He's always, he brings us out to bring us in to something. Right. It's the only reason God to bring us out. But if you have doubt, you're always out. So Just like the play like, Dr. Like, Zeus there. Like in the wilderness, they didn't. In the wilderness, they didn't have to con contend. 
they just existed. Yeah. Right? Because right. God provided for them Correct. every day. Yeah. But that wasn't God's best. No. That was yet to come. He wanted them to go in the promised land, but what yeah. what was the mind shift change they had to have to get to get to the better life, the abundant life. Right. And I believe Joshua, Caleb, and those households were modeling that new mindset. And those right. that wanted to, which tended to be the younger generation, grabbed a hold of it. The other ones couldn't. Because God always uses models yeah. to reveal transformation. What we're being transformed what? into. What happened God to the old people? What happened? Like, Did they just get tired? I mean, basically, they didn't want to fight. Right? Because you got to fight. You got to fight. And fought you got to. To get to the promised land, there's a fight. There's giants. Yep. Rivers and walls. But what causes older people not to fight? You ever think about that? Yes. What is it? What do you think it is? And I try to keep that in mind as I age. <laughs> yeah. I'm 53. I know. I was like, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and there are some men in my life that are older, mm -hmm. in their 70s, mm -hmm. who are always on the, including my father is one of them, who's always on the cutting edge. Okay. Mm. I think spiritually and what just do you their see mindsets. about him? What do you see about him? And that's my model. I have different models. And I say, okay. I, want, I want to be like that. Mm. And there's always wow. this sense of adventure. Mm -hmm. I believe in older people, and it's natural that we shrink our world. Right, we shrink our world, we shrink our, our influence. They naturally shrink. How many people they touch in their family? Because our culture teaches comfort. old people to shrink their. Yes, they do. Start start shrinking for retirement. Sell everything off. Sell you know, get down <laughs> but, low one apartment. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the world teaches not faith, shrinkage. but shrinkage. Yep. Not contending, that's for sure. No, it's like give up. Oh, I'm 65 years old. Okay, let's give up on life. <laughs> I don't think so. I think I think the key is a spirit of adventure. Wow. And as long as that spirit of adventure is there, I every, like that. every new hill, every turn, yes, has its dangers, but it's got its blessings because the steps of the righteous are ordered of the mm. Lord. And, and as long as I'm walking, as long as I see, I'm walk, I got to walk here wow. to walk here. And I think that is a secret. To stay wow. young at heart yeah. is to have that spirit of adventure. Like, this is a great journey. I had trauma. I had betrayals. I had, but then talk about your victories. The sense of adventure. The blessings. The... Keeping the sense of adventure. Mm hmm Wow. I like that. Well, you bring it out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping a sense of adventure. That's what I appreciate about you. You're not a slug. Like you're always looking. And it, yes, I know it's something that you carry, but I believe it's something you also feed. Mm -hmm. You feed the vision. You feed fresh. You feed newness. You f you're not just going to sit home in, and drink your pea nicoladas by the fire wow. every day. I was tempted to, though. Aren't we all? I was tempted to. Especially from the battle. Yeah. And there are times of R&R. &R. Yeah. But lifestyle, what is it? No, I'm an adventure. Let's see, God. And don't you think that maybe that's the, that's the voice of the accuser of the brethren? Like, and it, I think it hits in our older age. Mm -hmm. Like, fear of loss. Quit. Surrender. Lower your standards, lower your expectations, yeah. you know, don't be adventurous because I know it's like, yeah. you know, when yeah. we faced, when we faced the COVID-19 thing, I was, I was like saying, you know what, I'm going to be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I was like, you know what? I'm blessed. And right now we're at the point in our life where we could just make it a change. And I could just stop fighting and, and just chill out the rest of my life. Seriously. I was faced with that. No. And those I thoughts, we all are. Mm -hmm. those thoughts plagued me for about a week. <laughs> I was expecting to say, oh, at least a month or a year. <laughs> Still, though, it's very real week. It was That's a, a very it was real a, week. It was a, you know, I mean, you're talking tears coming down my oh, face. Yeah. A real week. You're talking about depressed, frustrated, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. saying to myself, I, I've given my life, and, and you know, for 30 years. And here I am faced with my entire calendar just closed out. Yep. Yeah. And I've given my life. 
I lost all my staff. Everybody quit on me. And I'm like, wow, is this how it ends? That's what I said to myself. Yep. Is this how it ends? And I had to make a decision to contend. So wait a minute, I've been here before. I've been here before. Now I need to shift. And and the Lord really, you know, it gets back to when I met you. Or not met you, but when I went up to Maine. Right. And in 2020, I don't even think I told you this. In 2020, the Lord reminded me of the lobster. That was your first trip back out. That was my first year, my first trip year back. Operation. First trip back out. I went up to you. Mm-hmm. And you took me, you're like, hey, have you ever had Maine lobster? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I've had lobster from all over the world. It's no big deal. I mean, like, yeah, but have you had Maine lobster? I'm like, yeah, well, I think I have. I don't know. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right, here we go for Maine lobster. And I remember sitting at that table and, and, and your wife was here. She's in, in the studio with us. And and here come this lobster. And no, first was the I butter. I did not know how big that was going to be. First was the butter. The butter, like the, the butter jar was like this big. Right after I had quintuple bypass heart surgery, my wife, I'm like, sorry, Bonnie. I'm like, <laughs> here comes the butter. I'm like, wow, that looks good. Had a little fire underneath it. Like, and the, and the, and the butter was yes, like bubbling, was. right? It's like so hot. And uh, then, and then this. I thought you guys said it was like 4.25 pounds. Am I getting no, the weight right? It was, it was, it was 3.5 or something. 3.5. It was just under four pounds. All right. Well, it was like, exaggeration, exa- evangelistically speaking, speaking, it was 4.25. Now it's two. Now it's three. Okay. Yeah, the no, fish went like from this big 3. to this 5. big. 3.5. It was somewhere around there. 3.5. It's big. That's big. That's a big It large. wouldn't even fit on a plate. And the plates were huge. It was like, damn it. And, uh, and you're so kind. Wasn't it fun, though? Yeah. You deep, you deep. You, you got all the meat out for me. I didn't have to do nothing. Just sat there. And man, when I dipped that lobster in that in that butter, and <laughs> I started eating it, man. The butter started dripping down my goatee, man. Uh, and then you get a big bib and all that, man. I, that, this is the best lobster I've ever had. I've never yes, had this yes. before. Then I went back home at that ho- little hotel you have up there. Back, yep. And I'm laying on my bed. And the Lord reminds me when I said, when I said to him, when I was having my heart attack, when I had my heart attack, had to go in for surgery. I told him, I said, God, you know, I'm ready to go. If I, if this is my time, <laughs> I've done everything. I've, 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 I've traveled the world. I've, I've lived a great life. I've, I've eaten the best of the best. I've experienced everything life has to experience. You that, baby. That's, <laughs> and I'm laying in bed and. I'm laying in bed and the Holy Spirit comes in and he says, but you haven't had Maine lobster. (laughs) I'm like, whoa, you're right. And he said, Keith, I have some things in store for you that you haven't even tasted yet. I have places I'm going to take you. I have a whole nother level of wealth that I'm going to bring into your life. I have experiences. I have doors that I have prepared for you. That that's way beyond even what you've even grabbed onto yet. And that hit me back in 2020. It was like the Lord said the same thing. He said, remember the lobster. I'm like, wow, Lord. Okay. Because from that moment when I was with you to 2020, he did exactly what he said. My wealth increased, my influence increased. My, my, I mean, some of the biggest churches I ever went to in my life happened during that little window of time after that. Uh, I, I not only had uh, Maine lobster, I experienced the best tasting thing I've ever tasted, which is salmon cheeks. Yes, yes. Salmon cheeks. Yeah, <laughs> salmon cheeks in Jakarta. That's where I had them. OMG. Oh, wow. Is he making you hungry yet? That's the question. <laughs> So, so that's what I'm thinking is, well, it's like, there's this temptation for all of us to settle for where we're at Mm -hmm. instead of contend and continue to fight for what God wants, really wants for us for our life, which is progress. 
What do you think about it? And there's a whole bunch of words I could have used. I use that word because we get the picture of the boxing lean. We get the picture of, you know, some pain. You get the picture of, but you're going for the prize. So I, that's yeah. why I created that picture, you know, with the whole, because pictures speak and, and I use that word. And we use other languages. You might use like, you know, run the race, you know, whatever biblical language some people right, use, right, you know, right, or chasing right. the dream or, right, right. you know. And so this brings in that blood, sweat, tears, but also that after all that, raising that trophy or or enjoying the the prize. And I think there's many prizes. And you just said to yourself, you've you've experienced different prizes, and we have in our life. Mm -hmm. I believe the Lord does reward us now. Yeah, there's reward when I'm with Him physically in that way, but there's rewards now that hey, a lobster's a reward to some. Yeah. I hate lobster. Well, whatever. But for Keith, Doctor Keith, that was. Yeah, it was more than the lobster. God used that lobster as you know right. what? Keep contending because look at this. And you said right. to yourself, "I, I, that's it right there. It's done." That's right. Bring a nutshell right here. The whole whole thing we're talking about. Wow, wow. For you, that became very personal. That was a personal thing. Very personal. Right. Very personal. So at the end of the day, it gave me no one else can fight for you. No one gave else me the faith I need you. to say, "Wait a minute. Wait a minute." It like shook me. Yeah. My wife is awesome, but she can't contend for me. Yeah, she's got my back, but at the end of the day, it becomes a very personal, doesn't it? It's yeah. either make it or break it. So, do we? Is is there ever a point where we just say, "Oh, I won. Oh, I won," and then we? I think when we we go on cruise control. I think at certain summits in our life, there's different summits or stages in our life that yes, we won. But I, I said, but when you have the spirit of adventure, there's always another hill. There's always another. Right. Because gotcha. God's, God's multiplying. He's never he, ending. He's even never lions ending. have to rest, right? Yeah. Even so, soldiers have to. So rest. They have to get sleep. They guilty. have to get rest. And mm -hmm. so that's like you hit a plateau. It's like a mountain that you cli you're climbing. Sharpen up your stuff. You hit, relax, yeah, you got to sharpen your tools. You got to mm -hmm. rest, rest, eat. To get ready for the ne next attack. You get a whole bunch of go-getters, and they're awesome to work with. But if they're not wise enough, no one to step back, they're gonna, they burn themselves right out. And right. they're good to nobody after that. Mm -hmm. You know, they might have made a big splash, but then at the end, there's no legacy. There's nothing left behind because it was all about penetration. It was about pushing back. So there's that on the other end, too. So God gives us balance, doesn't he? Yeah. Let's hear what he's saying. That's good. That's really good. Even lions have to rest. But then they get up from the rest and it's another day. <laughs> and the lion always stays hungry. Got to stay hungry. And if you lose that hunger, you're just a walking dead person on the earth. Got to keep that dream alive. You got to contend for the dream that's on the inside of you. And I think, I think you have to reset at, at certain mountain peaks. Yes. You have to reset, and you got to take time to get away, reflect. Okay, I've 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 mm -hmm. done this. I fought the good fight. I won, and now I need to reflect and reset my mind for the next mountain peak of where God wants to take me. And uh, and I think you kind of said that. I like that. Like you got to sharpen your tools. Like oh wow, I made it to this point. Now I got to sharpen my tools. Like I see that with a lot of speakers, authors, and consultants, is that they they get satisfied with a certain amount of influence, and then they don't realize. Wait a minute, you, you've made it this far, but what got you here is not going to get you there. No. And now you need to come back and you need to sharpen that tool. You need to get mm -hmm. mentoring. You need to get coaching. You need to get new information and build some new skills. Because the skills you have to get you to 100,000 is not the skills you need to make a million dollars a year or 10 million or 100 million. You got to sharpen that blade now. Uh, so I, I hope you're enjoying this. Let's see. Let's see all of our. Let's see who's on. Hey, Janine. Hey, Julie. We see you there live. Hey, it's, I think it says math, M A T H with the Superman. Hey, Irene from, from Cameroon. Hey, if you're if you're watching, I want you just to post down below. Push, see it, seize it, live it. That's the three points of sub points of this book. Give us a synopsis of those three points in just a nutshell before we go. The 
you got to see it, seize it, live it, that subtitle. How do you kind of give us a nutshell of that? I say it like this. You know where you want to go. You, you step up to the mark. You put a stake in the ground. And that's it. You say, this is my line. And you don't go back from that. You go forward from there. Until you put a, a thing in there, that's it. You won't live it. You'll go backwards. That's so you're it. saying you got to see it? See where you want to go. And then is the seize it, the stake in the ground? Yep. Okay. <laughs> that's great. You, you have something in your hand. You see it. You and say, you have to put that as your, your the wall behind you now that you're not going to go past that. You know, the language is put a line in the sand, whatever. Step across it. That's it. You're not going back. Okay. Yep. Wow. And then you what? Begin to live it. Take your actions. Do it. Start seeing what happens. I always do this. Shake a tree. See what falls out. Don't move to the next tree. <laughs> uh, I'm great at doing that. Great? I just keep I shaking think. trees, man. Yeah. Well, there you go. Keep shaking trees. Uh, that's good. Get that on Amazon? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let, yeah. Uh, get this on Amazon. I got my copy on Amazon. And uh, it's a great book. You're going to really love it. I liked it. I like chapter two because I think everybody right now needs to read chapter two. Uh, man, when I saw that, I'm like, wow, if there's ever a time. Uh, chapter two says, get your supplies ready. I love this. And he points out that uh, Joshua told his group, it said, pass through the midst of the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourself. <laughs> Hey man, you, you you know, you got to get your resources ready for what? For the next attack. Mm -hmm. For the next attack. Uh, because remember, money flows through a cycle and there's a winter and that's the time when we're going to be buying. I, I don't believe we're in a winter. I believe we're in fall. And But winter is coming and there's, and those who have big storehouses when winter comes and things things get ugly, that's when you start buying. That's when you seize it. <laughs> okay, so, uh, all right. So everybody, thank you for joining. Hey, listen, uh, before we go, I want you to remember, you know, when you sow a seed, that's when change starts happening. That's when the seasons of your life start changing. And so we wanna show you just, if you just move over just a hair, Matt, uh, go to wealthychurch.com to sow a seed. And uh, thank you so much for all of you who support us and are behind us in what we're doing here to, you know, to be different and uh, to help you live the total wealthy lifestyle, spirit, soul, body, relationally and financially. God wants you to be wealthy. Well, he wants you to be whole in every area of your life, not just spiritually, not just financially, not just relationally. He wants the whole thing to be wealthy. I want to be wealthy. I don't want to just be rich, all <laughs> right? So thank you so much for sewing and cash app at DR Keith Johnson, or you can call our office at 352-597-8775. And so we're excited. Matt, I want you to come and just pray for people. There are some people who I, you know, and I just know who are listening, who are kind of feeling like, yeah, you can stand up. That's fine. I'll stand up. Uh, just feeling like, wow, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm thinking about quitting and giving up. And, and uh, I've, I've become that person who just got satisfied with where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speak to them and pray for them. Would sure. you please? Thank you again for joining today. May the Lord be with you. Maybe minister prophetically if you need to. So I just pray for every... Uh, person that's watching this today, God, you have ordained this time for them to be able to see this broadcast. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit right now be very evident in their life in the middle of any whirlwind or chaos that, or decisions or things that look insurmountable, very large, looming in their life. Maybe they're feeling pressure or stresses that they did not expect. But I just pray right now, Lord God, that that word, that thing that you put deep inside of them begins to vibrate with the very life that you put in it. And it begins to rejuvenate them in their mind. Let their emotions be balanced today. Their mind be not filled with anxiety or anxious thoughts. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your word 
be that light that guides them. That's what, that's what the word says. Lord, you guide them, guide their step. Let that word that's resting in them begin to just begin to grow, 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 and become a reality. I pray, Lord, those that seem like maybe it's out of reach, let them own the word. Let them personalize it. Take ownership of that which is in their life, and then responsibility will follow. I thank you, Lord, for the courage right now that is rising up in their heart and their spirit today. And everything that's kind of messy begins to clear up a little bit. Let their vision see so they can make the proper choice and decision. You are our wisdom, Lord, and I thank you that your presence is with them. Fill their plate, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen, amen. Okay, hey, see it, seize, seize it. it, and live it out. It's all about decisions at the end of the day. Decisions to go after what rightfully belongs to you. It's available. Our daddy owns it all. It's not his decision. It's your decision to go for what you want. God bless everybody. Thanks for joining. So glad you're with us. Thank you, Matt, for being part of this today uh, you, and speaking to our people. Make sure you get his book and connect up with him. And uh, especially if you're up in Maine. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye.